Hey everyone, Michelle Markey with Medina de Mostic Art Studio. Yeah, say that three times real fast, huh? <laughs> anyway, I am doing something altogether brand new, but still the same, painting on fabric. But first, I don't know if you can see this, but I am painting on the back of a shirt. Nothing new there. However, let me zoom in to this rose I'm working on. And I don't know if you can tell this or not, but this is a transfer. Um, I actually purchased this. This is my own design. I sent my design off. They printed out the, D, it's called a DTF design to film. And I ironed it on the back of this shirt and now I'm painting it. And I think I've indicated in some of my previous videos that it's, it's kind of like time to move on and go to the next level. The stitching is great. I am never going to stop coloring on embroidered stitched areas, but I've had quite a number of my students who are chomping at the bit to get to that next level. And that is where I think this is for, for those students. It's painting on basically a decal. I mean, this is what I would call it, and I know they got fancy titles for it, but it's an iron-on transfer. Many of you who have crickets or silhouettes can probably do this yourself. And I'm not going to get into that here because there's a buku ton of videos out on YouTube about that. But what I am going to talk about is doing the painting. Now I am using ink tense pencils on this rose. I have put in a tiny bit of fabric medium in the center so that you can see how this works. This is a 100% cotton shirt. Um, so I will be documenting this as I color. Now, everything that you see here, I've colored first, except for the center. Let me zoom in here just a bit. You may be able to see a tiny bit of fabric medium that's shiny, um, but when this dries, it will dry clear. And I think that is what I'm going to like best about this, is that you can lay your color down easily, but it doesn't hide the actual design itself. So, part one, stay tuned for the rest. Okay, so I'm laying down some fabric medium on this rose. And uh, the very first thing I want to point out that's a little different than working with our normal kind of embroidery patterns on the cotton sateen. This shirt is a twill. Now I'm going to zoom in here and I'm sure you can see that there is the weave right there. Similar to denim, you do have to kind of work with the weave itself. So I'm dipping my brush into fabric medium, and I'm gonna come down here and show you what I'm talking about. Now, I, I can lay the fabric medium down that way, but I'm going crossways with the, with the grain. Instead, I think what's better is to start and work with the grain and get the color into, let me zoom out just slightly so, so I don't mess up here, um, get it into that weave first, and then you can start spreading it around. Um, ooh, I'm very happy with that. Um, so if I come in here now, you're also going to be fighting a bit with the decal. Now these are very flat, um, very attached, but there is a slight, you can feel it ever so slightly on these, just a bit of a, of a slight rise, but it's minuscule. It's nothing like the old fashioned decals like I mentioned earlier. Um, this is very smooth. It ironed on. Yes, I ironed it on. 15 seconds high cotton setting with a piece of parchment paper and it went on with, like a snap. And, and I'll, I'll get into that later, but I'm really more focused right now on the, on the, on the painting and the coloring and how easy this is because, oh my gosh, it is. So let's do another one. Let's come up here. Um, again, you need to work kind of with the grain. Ah, there we go. So notice what I'm doing here is I'm working with the grain. I had already laid down some Flamingo Pink Ink Tense Pencil. 
I used a tiny bit of watercolor pencil in here as well, like right there. I don't know how well it's gonna show up. It's hard to get the watercolor into the grain because it is so basically raised. Um, I think intense pencils are going to be the way to go. But look at the color pop up. Oh, that looks really, really good. So um, I don't think this is really going to be any different than what we've done before. The only difference if you are a beginner is you do not have the raised stitching to keep you inside the lines. Now with this rose, it's the reason why I have chosen it as kind of the first trial of this because a rose, well, okay, if you get a little bit of these colors in each one of the little petal areas, not a problem. Roses kind of look that way. Um, we'll see more in depth when I start working these leaves and start trying to color in veins and get kind of, and I'm headed for a, a very realistic look here. So um, stay tuned for that, but I'll continue coloring this and we'll pop back with more suggestions as I color forward. Okay, interestingly enough, um, straight pencil gives you this very pale, even ink tints. I know this is gonna be quite shocking to many of y'all. Even ink tints goes on, and again, it could be the twill, but it goes on very light. The way I'm getting this, I'm using Carmine Pink. Um, the way I'm getting this really strong color is my favorite technique of, hang on, let me show you. I'm doing this, of course, as usual, with my brush and one hand and this. Ah, you know my favorite technique, this one right here, right? Okay, let me put that aside and show you that it really, it goes on much better, the color when you um, have it directly on your brush. Interesting little trick. It may mean that in the long run that, um, and I'm still pulling off more color from the, the brush itself, uh, or from the pencil. It may mean that the color is better applied as a paint, which you know doesn't mean you, you, you have to use paints. You know that you can turn ink tints pencils into watercolor. Um, so this is something just to be aware of. Is it the twill? My gut says yes. Um, I will probably end up purchasing more of these decals. I'm sorry, DTFs um, for those in the know uh, so that I can practice on them a little bit more. But like for instance, I wanna put some deeper color um, and maybe, maybe it's just, I'm just not used to dealing in pastels, but I really think um, this is better suited for more of a, a strong color um, because after all, I mean, look at that. that, that's starting to look pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. May have to blend this out just a little bit. The, I gotta tell you, the, 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 um, the grain, I'm fighting it. I really am fighting it. Um, you really have to kind of go with it first and work the color and then, and then strengthen it. Layers, 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 it appears. But let's just step back and take a look at this. Um, I am totally thrilled with this idea. Um, I, you know, I'll have to play around with it some more and you'll see me wearing this shirt, I'm sure, one day. And who knows, you know, we'll have to see how well bling applies to it because, you know, I can't do anything without bling. But um, so far, so good. Stay tuned. Hey, everyone, back. Okay, so I've done a second rose. And let me get this out of the light so that you can see the color. Oh, my God. Woohoo! I'm loving this, y'all. I'm really enjoying this. It is different. Um, the grains, again, or the rather the, 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 the texture of the, the weave of the twill is a bit different, but I don't think it's hard to master. Um, very happy with this. I came in and added some more pink on that one. Um, so the next question is, which color will this one be? Stay tuned and you'll find out. Hi everyone. So I finally did the third rose right here. 
Um, uh, I, I am just very, very happy with how all these are turning out. Um, quick look at what is being used in the pinkish red rose. It's a, a variety of oranges, pinks, reds, and finally fuchsia, um, which is what you really have to do to build up the color of a rose to get the dark centers, um, good contrast. Basically, when you see this and in here, it's uh, poppy red, fuchsia, and chili red. Um, and, and if you, by the way, I use Pinterest for all my pictures. In fact, let me just pull this over so that you can see. This is the rose that I was using to follow that. Now, no, is it exact? Eh, not at all. But it gives me some ideas on the pencil colors that I choose in order to have something to follow and, and get an idea with. So next are the leaves. Oh, and by the way, um, I have to really stress how much easier this is to spread the color with the fabric medium, but um, it, it'll, it, I get sloppy too. So you can see, you know, there's a little bit of this. I'll of course come back in with some white out later on and fix all my um, little creative opportunities that keep popping up, including the ones where I accidentally touch the brush in the middle of the leaf. Um, I'll be using beach green and some of the darker greens uh, a little later uh, to, to color this. So three roses down, leaves to go. Stay tuned. So um, again, back to coloring leaves, I want to show you the kind of picture that I'm going to use to get the leaf colors. Um, and again, just directly off of Pinterest. In fact, if you want to go to my Pinterest site, Medina Domestic Arts Studio, there's a whole section on roses. Um, sometimes it's hard to find roses that have good pictures of their leaves, but I thought this one would and is. So what colors have I pulled out to work on the leaves? And let me just show you here, get these turned around. Olivine is a brand new pencil from Ink Tense. I don't know that you're going to find it that easily. If you cannot find it, um, my suggestion is to use um, felt green or hooker's green, but it's, it's, a, it's a lighter medium green kind of olive green. Oh, you can also use light olive. Um, I am choosing these because they're darker greens Beach green, leaf green, and Ionian green are some of my favorite colors for getting a dark texture on leaves. So the very first thing I'm going to do is, and we'll just work over here where I can actually film this and color it at the same time. When I do leaves, I, I like to layer the color. So I'm just coming in here with the olivine first. Um, I believe leaves tend to have a more yellow-green base, hence why I choose kind of the colors that I do, as opposed to a, a blue-green. Now, of course, that depends on each plant, but I do tend to work in that direction uh, to put leaves down. Okay, so once I've got a base down, then I'm going to pull something out like, oh, I, I think I'll use beach green, and start bringing in more of the darker towards the center. We all know that as the leaf turns towards the center, it, it does get a little bit darker, hence why I'm, I'm using the beach green where I am right now. Okay, now last but not least, I'm going to come in with leaf green and this is a really nice deep 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 green it's it's actually got kind of more gray in it um so you can see probably right off the bat that that's substantially darker than the beach uh, maybe even put a little bit on the outside just to fill in the color okay 
Last, um, let's see, what have I not used? I think I have not used Ionian Green. Now, Ionian Green, I'll put just a little out here. Be careful, it is probably the darkest of all the greens. And so I would put it down here to give it just a, a darker texture as you reach the base of the leaf. But just leave it at that for the time being um, because what you wanna do is put the fabric medium down now and do it in such a way that it will help you figure out how much additional, sorry about for the movement, you know I always have to do this um, with one hand painting and the other one coloring. Um, but oh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, this looks great. Um, notice how nice everything smooths over these, um, these designs. I'm, I'm very happy with this whole idea of the designs. Now again, will it completely replace stitching? No. Um, I think it has its purposes though, particularly with shirts. You know, so many of you have asked about my shirt where I put the uh, bl uh, blue bonnets and hummingbird on. I know you've commented on it many times in the show. Well, you know, I would need your shirt in order to put that on. However, if I create these decals that you can iron on your own shirt and then give you the color combination on how to color it, um, then that way it becomes yours and you don't have to buy an extra shirt from me and this allows you to get the coloring that I did, but without having to spend a lot of extra money. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do for the rest of these leaves. Very happy with that. The shininess, by the way, let me pull that up so you can see it. The shininess is the, um, the decal. And I'm just gonna say that for lack of a better term. I'm, I'm using old fashioned terms, but I know many of you will know what I'm talking about. But I'm liking that combination. So effectively, I'm just gonna just do all the rest of the leaves in that color combo. Stay tuned. Okay, so they're done. Um, I really have nothing really that much more to add other than this. Um, I'm going to let these dry um, for several hours. I will heat press. Now, a quick word about heat pressing um, with this. According to the instructions that I received, um, this stuff can take as much heat as you give it. Um, in fact, when you do set the, the decal, and I'll do future videos on how to do this now that I've done it myself and been successful, um, these things can take ubers amounts of heat. Um, you can heat them, uh, set them with a heat press. I happen to use a hot cotton setting iron. I did end up using parchment paper, as I think I mentioned earlier. Um, so once again, once these are completely dry, I will heat set it one more time again with that parchment paper on top. And I also may actually do it from the back, similar to what I do with my embroidery patterns. I am also going to wash this. Now, one quick note about this particular shirt, this fabric, oops, I'm losing it. This fabric was Teflon treated. So what I may end up finding out is that the color comes off because the Teflon didn't allow it to stick, but we're gonna find out when I go to wash it. And I will video it as I always do with any fails so that you can see what not to do. Stay tuned. Okay, everyone came out of the wash and I'm gonna do a little close up here I apologize, it's still wet. I'm going to throw it in the dryer next, but it was a success. So add this to your repertoire of new ways to paint on fabric. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for a lot more coming down the pipe, y'all.